So before getting into my own video, I just want to give a quick shout out to Mike the Globetard who captured a spectacular ISS lunar transit recently and what made it different to others I have seen is that during Mike's capture the ISS was actually illuminated so you can see it before it reaches the moon and you can just see it as it crosses the face and then you see it again as it passes to the other side of the moon. So an excellent capture and I've actually slowed that down for you down to 20% and 5% and I'll play that video shortly. And Mike has a number of excellent videos on his channel. In this one called Curved Water, he repeats the observation that has been made by Soundly several times across Lake Pontchartrain where we can identify the curvature of the earth in these power lines. Well worth checking out Mike's channel. I'll play his ISS Lunar Transit video now and that will set the scene for my own video. There it goes. So I think at this stage nobody will dispute the fact that there is something up there that looks like the ISS. It has been captured in lunar and solar transits many times and confirmed by flat earthers who have done this themselves. But one of the questions I often hear flat earthers ask, if there are so many satellites up there, why can't we see more? And the simple answer to that is yes you can see plenty of satellites in the night sky. If you have a telescope and a camera capable of taking long exposure time-lapse photos, you can see hundreds of them in a single night, and that is looking at just one small part of the sky. This is what I'm going to show you in the following footage. So during the past few nights I have been using this telescope to take long exposure time-lapse photos of the night sky. And because the telescope is situated on an equatorial mount that is compensating for the rotation of the Earth, the star field is not moving in the time lapse. However, we see plenty of satellites crossing the path. You can see them moving down from the top and I'll explain what that star is and why I chose this location. We even saw an aircraft just go past then and I'm glad that happened because it helps you identify what a satellite looks like compared to what an aircraft looks like. That's what the aircraft looked like. Now another thing I did during the time lapse was temporarily switch off the tracking and that means the telescope was no longer moving and for the geostationary satellites that means they suddenly stop moving in the frame and the star field will start moving and we see that very shortly so about now I turned off the tracking and you can see that the satellite is now a single dot and the stars themselves have these trails when I turn the tracking back on, the stars stop moving 
and the satellite will continue traveling down towards the bottom of the frame. And that confirms that these particular satellites, the geostationary satellites, are in fact moving with the rotation of the Earth. And the reason we see the stars move across the sky at night is because the Earth is rotating. And when we use a telescope on an equatorial mount to compensate for the rotation of that Earth, the stars are not going to move in the video. And yet we're seeing plenty of satellites. So when I play the video, you will also notice that I adjust the exposure a couple of times and later focus on the Orion Nebula, just for something different. And then I go back to the original star. Now, just to explain why I chose that star, if we go to any planetarium program and turn on the satellites, you can see there is a very distinct line of satellites and these are mostly the geostationary satellites that are in fact orbiting above the equator but from Sydney Australia you will see them slightly north of the celestial equator and that is just the geometry of the globe if we were in the northern hemisphere we would see this line of satellites south of the celestial equator. And what I did for the time lapse is carefully select a star that was located right in the path of these satellites. Now remember the satellites are moving with the Earth so to a ground-based observer they are stationary in the sky. It is the stars that are actually moving across the sky to the observer. However the equatorial mount is cancelling the Earth's rotation and that is why the star field appears stationary and the satellites appear to be moving. The star that I selected is called 63 Orionis and these are the catalogue numbers so you can look them up yourself but what is significant about this position is when we run the program in fast forward you can see just how many satellites are going directly past that star and that is precisely what we see in my time-lapse video So now I'll play the time-lapse video, which was made by taking 10 second exposures and then assembling the photographs at 10 frames per second into a video. At the end of that, I'll play some additional footage taken from the iPhone while I had the telescope set up and taking the exposures. So Flat Earthers, you keep asking these questions. I think it's time you did your own research because in a single night, I was easily able to identify dozens of satellites in the sky.
So there you can see quite a bright satellite just moving down towards the star at the center. As soon as it gets there, I'm going to turn off the tracking. So the satellite is going to stop and the stars will then start moving across the frame. So tracking is now turned off and you will now see the satellite stop and the stars begin to move. There you can actually see two satellites, one just below that bright star and the other one just to the top and right of it, just right of it now. If we turn tracking back on, Tracking is back on now. So the telescope is now compensating for the rotation of the Earth and therefore the stars will not appear to move in the video. But because the satellites are rotating with the Earth, they will appear to be moving. see that very clearly. We'll turn off the tracking again. Tracking is now off. So with the tracking turned off, the telescope is essentially not moving, it's just in a fixed position. And that is why those geostationary satellites appear stationary in the video.